In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the E6B flight computer to calculate time to a VOR station. In this procedure, what we're going to do is fly perpendicular to the VOR radial and measure the amount of time it will take for the CDI needle to deflect and measure the amount of deflection for the corresponding time. All right, now I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate the time to a VOR station in the aircraft. The first thing I've done is tune and identify the Westminster VOR at 117.9 or 0 for the first and second VOR instrument. Here I've got the course deviation indicator needle centered on the 350 radial. I have a two flag indicating that we are going to the VOR station directly. I've also got my stopwatch over here. I'm going to reset it to zero and now the digital stopwatch is ready to go. I've got the altitude and the navigation mode selected on the autopilot so that it will free up our hands just for the purpose of this demonstration. And we can also see here on the Bendix King DME it's giving us information in terms of distance to the VOR station and what our ground speed is. And that will come alive once I unpause the simulation and it's getting live data. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly directly to the VOR station. Then we're going to make a 90 degree detour so that we're flying perpendicular to the VOR station. As we start our turn perpendicular, in this case from south to west, the needle will start deflecting. We'll hold off until we get to our 90 degree offset. So once the aircraft stabilizes flying due west, we'll see that the course deviation indicator needle is deflecting to the left. We'll wait till it gets right on one of these tick marks which is two degrees apart so every dot is a two degrees all the way up to ten degrees total. So we'll wait till it gets to the first tick mark. The moment it gets here we will start the stopwatch. We'll let it pass through two or three tick marks and then we'll stop the start watch and we'll reposition the aircraft so it's pointing south again to go back towards the VOR. Now, you can think of this estimate kind of like an average. So the more data you collect, the better your average estimate of the amount of time it takes to the VOR station is going to be. So when we let the needle line up to this dot and then start the timer, the more deflection you allow the needle to get to before you stop the timer and then reposition the aircraft back to the VOR station, the better your estimate should be, theoretically speaking, um, in the calculation. So once we get to the first tick mark, I'll let the needle swing all the way to 10 degrees. You don't have to, but in this case I will. I'll let it get all the way to 10 degrees, I'll stop the timer, and then I'll reposition the aircraft back to due south to retrack the VOR station. So now I'm going to unpause the simulator and we are now flying. I will switch over to the heading mode on the autopilot. I'll swing the aircraft around to a heading of due west and we'll see the aircraft is moving in response. And we're passing in through to the 240 heading. And we can see the course deviation indicator is starting to swing slowly. Now we're coming in on due west. And the needle is at 2 degrees deflection to the left. So we start our timer right now. And we'll stop the timer once the deviation course deviation indicator needle gets all the way to the end, which is 10 degrees total variation. And we're holding due west, which is 90 degrees perpendicular to our course to the VOR station. Now we're coming in through 4 degrees deflection. Now we're coming in through 6 degrees deflection. Here we're coming in through 
8 degrees deflection. And finally, we're going to wait till we get to a total or full scale deflection of 10 degrees offset. And we're passing through. And coming up on 10 degrees total deflection right about now. And I'll stop the timer. So that took 1 minute 15 seconds. We'll reposition the aircraft so that we go back to the course that we wanted. We want to go to the VOR station. So I'll take us back to a heading of south. And I'll also give it about a 20 degree lead so that instead of going due south, we'll go about 160 to 170 because we've been flying to the right of the station. So we want to go back a little bit towards the left uh, to get us realigned. So now we're coming back in. And we'll just hold this heading until the CDI needle slowly starts to walk back in. And as it starts to walk back in and center itself, we'll switch from heading tracking back to navigation tracking. Or we could just switch to navigation tracking right now. Either way should work. The aircraft will hold this heading until the needle starts swinging in. And what we'll notice is that our distance is a 17 point seven nautical miles to the VOR station and our ground speed is 115 knots which will help us verify the amount of time it will take to get to the station is kind of a double check. Now we'll use the E6B to calculate the amount of time it will take. All we'll do is find the time that we measured with the stopwatch on the inside scale in minutes. So here's 1 minute 10, 1 minute 20. We measured 1 minute and 15 seconds. We'll line that up with the amount the CDI needle deflected. Recall that we started when it was at 2 degrees and we stopped when it was at 10 degrees, so the total deflection is 8 degrees. So we line up 8 with 1 minute 15. Then all we do is look at the index 10 on the outside stationary scale, move on the inside scale, and we see that it's at 9.4 minutes. Now, at the same time, we looked at the Bendix King radio, particularly the DME information, which told us that we were 17.7 nautical miles away and our ground speed was 112 knots. Well we can use the E6B flight computer to calculate the amount of time it would take using that information as well. That's just kind of a check. So what I'll do is line up the index with 112 knots. We'll move to 17.7 nautical miles away. Sure enough, 9.5 minutes. So it really does work and it is that simple.